podcast that takes the act of writing, which can sometimes be not easy, and tries to make it less not easy. I'm one of your hosts, Mary Mascari. And I'm your other host, Melissa Long. Today, we're going to talk about scenes, which I love because as far as a plot goes, I think they're the, the most important unit of a, of a story. Yeah, I would agree. And I think they're often overlooked. I think so too. People talk about like, I get a lot of things about like sentence level stuff and then like overall plot stuff. But for me, I tend to think in scenes. I know for obviously for what you're doing for scripts, scenes are critical. I mean, that's what everything is. Yeah. But I think in, even in, in novel writing and prose, you know, you need to think about the scenes that you're doing because that's, I think, what it's all about. So we're going to talk about them and how we, what makes them good and what makes them bad and how to write them. How to save them. <laughs> yes. All right, so first let's figure out what a scene is. Like when we say scene, so for me, I think a scene, usually it happens in one place. There's usually a little beginning and middle and end to it. It's usually kind of a little mini thing. Mini thing. Thing. <laughs> There's a technical term, uh, and I'm really good with words. Um, I think, I always think of, when I'm writing fiction particularly, I always think of a scene as, a moment in the story that has a where the character has a goal and there's uh, and we're understanding like what their intention is like what their motivation is for that goal and what mm -hmm. the conflict is for every single scene not for the whole story but for like that scene if we're showing mm -hmm. it to the audience or the reader there needs to be a reason why and they need to know why we're showing it and understand that there's conflict because if we're just watching somebody do something and there's no conflict or no motivation like why are, why is it in there it shouldn't be taking space in the longer work that's my belief i i'm going to add to that i i agree that's absolutely you need there needs to be some conflict needs to be something needs to be accomplished i think one other thing that needs to happen in every scene is something needs to change right there's some and, and it can be a big change small change you know and, and that's a, a question for where it places in a larger work but you have to change something because if if Nothing changes from the beginning of the scene to the end of the scene. You can cut that guy. It's gone. Yep. So some kind of rising stake <laughs> or change in the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about the changes, and this is actually something I, I've like really done some work about. It was a, it's a module that I teach. Um, but the size of the change uh, the, the, uh, can help define the pace of the story. So if you've got a lot of large changes in a row, that's going to increase the pace of your story. Uh, smaller changes will make a slower pace. And sometimes you want that, right? You want, but if you're feeling like you're writing something and you feel like the pace is really slow, slam a big change in there and that'll kick it up really well. All right, so we know what a scene is. Oh, also, uh, one other thing for a scene is there are one or more characters in them. Uh, usually not more than, I don't know, Five seems like a lot. Six seems, a lot, you know, six. I don't know. I was just reading, yeah. I'm reading Dune right now, and there are scenes with like seven people in them, and they can be a little hard to keep track of. I think you can have a scene with one person. Can you? I don't know. Yeah, I think you can totally have a scene with one person. They're still discovering something, or the conflict comes from the environment, or uh, yeah, something that they found. Right. I hear you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So we've got a change. We've got a conflict. Um, something that needs to be accomplished, and and. and what usually ends up happening is then you tie these things together and they make a story. Now, I will say that not everything in, a, at least in a, um, in a prose, you know, like a novel or whatever, not everything in there is, is a scene. Sometimes you have some, like, connective tissue that takes you from one place to another. Again, that's going to be the, the lowest pace. You know, that's, that's going to be the, the, you know, no change, very calm stuff. Uh, so if you do have that stuff, you have to make it really interesting. Um, the example that I always use is in... Um, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. The, when Harry is getting into the boats and going to Hogwarts, right? Like, th there's no mm -hmm. conflict there. I mean, it's just they're going, but it's amazing, right? It's so interesting because, like, a boat, like, I'm on a boat and there's this castle and this thing, you know, like, it's important setup. Um, so you can have that sort of stuff. That's not a scene. There's no conflict. There's no, I guess things change and that Harry's going to a different place, but that's kind of stretching it. Uh, but the reason that stuff works is it's at the beginning, it's establishing the world. Um, and there's a lot of exciting stuff that's happened before and after. So, you know, you can, you can get away with that, but it's, uh, tread carefully with it. But, right. okay. So that's a scene. We know what a scene is. Yeah. Now I will say though, that 
the scene, like I thought I really had a hard time transitioning into film and television because they use the same word scene. And I think scenes exist in the same way that they do in fiction. But like scenes in a script, if you're reading a script, like are often devised by the exact location where they're filming, right? And the slug line. Mm -hmm. And to me, like a scene, uh, the, the comparable to what you would see in fiction is actually a sequence. So it's a collection of scenes that tell a specific beat mm. and it's going to be the same beat whether it's you're reading the novel or if you look at an adaptation of a novel what you'll find is a series of sequences or camera shots and locations or sets that create the same beat that was in the original fiction piece so that was one of the things that I had to adjust because I was applying all those same rules to scenes and my scenes were getting really long and they're like you can't have a scene this long and there's all these rules about what should happen and then I realized oh you're talking about this individual little snippet <laughs> like of them walking up the stairs but that's not a scene in and of itself that's a part of a larger scene ah uh, yeah I see what you're saying yeah whereas in a novel you, you probably would honestly you probably wouldn't even include those little scenes but you need them visually to show where you are you know you do, like establishing shots and stuff like that you don't necessarily need those in fiction as much is they're just it's done differently it's just a different thing i think you do i think that's an assumption i think it depends on the storytelling right because if i'm telling a horror story and i'm trying to invoke the sense of like dread of somebody pulling up to this empty house then like those scenes have merit right but if it's just a romance and i'm like oh and she's walking through the hall of this corporate building and look how lavish is it like there's no real point to that especially if she's been there before or the character has been there before Right, but you need it in a film so that people understand wh where we are. And it's a, like usually in a film, it's like a second. You're like, oh, okay, great, moving on. So yeah, so things I think that are important to, to, to figure out, either before you've written a scene or once you've written it and you're revising it. Um, like I said, for me, it's who's in the scene and what do they want, which is something that's easy to skip, and I'm terrible at that part. I would say the, like you spoke earlier to the change and I heard um, on Twitter, like some advice. I always I always read these things from writers, these mm -hmm. tweets from writers about uh, writing advice. And I'm like, that's not right. Or they start to become my pet peeve. And one about yeah. scenes that came up was this idea that your character, like 90 to 95% of the time, should never get what they want at, by the end of a scene. And I was like, well, yeah. that's a pretty blanket like statement. And I think it works kind of well. Yeah. But... To me, I find that kind of advice to be limiting <laughs> for writers. And it's not enjoyable for me as a reader because I cannot stand when my characters never win or never get something right. I am attracted to stories yeah. about power and about skill. And so like if I'm reading James Bond, like I want him to win. He better win something. I need yeah. him to. That's part of his character. So yeah. I think, again, be careful of the blanket advice when people are like, oh, well, like your scene should always start as late as possible or it should always be X. You know, you know how we feel about those rules. Yeah, always and never are not are, is, a, is a red flag, right? So it's always, never. Yes. Uh, the, the odds are like, well, sometimes. But it, I'd say it's something to think about. For me, the other thing that is are the tactics. What are the, the things that the characters do to to get what they want you know to try to get what they want in this thing and I, I like to like literally kind of switch seats so i'll be like okay i'm gonna think about the scene from character a's point of view okay great now i've thought about their thing now i'm gonna like mentally scoot over and uh think about the scene from this other character's point of view and see how they how they interact it, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you need to think about who, who's in it and what they want and if, if no one you don't know what the character wants if they don't want anything um they probably don't need to be there <laughs> yeah now here's the thing I always think about is like making sure the thing that person A wants and the thing that person B wants are kind of on the same level. Is that you know what I'm saying? Like person A wants to murder somebody and person B wants a chicken leg. You know, like I don't know. <laughs> I know that could be funny. I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a scandal episode where that exact thing happens. <laughs> like, there's like one yeah. person killing you know and what? holding yeah. somebody hostage and the other person's like, I just want to eat my chicken, man. <laughs> like... 
What are we having for lunch? I don't know. Yep. <laughs> I will murder them. Okay, well, I'm going to have this. Yeah. It can be but that's funny. Yeah. I guess that's that conflict. That um, dissonance is, is where the comedy comes in. So, um, again, I'm doing always, never. But I guess that's Ex- something, again, an aspect to look at. What are the levels of, of want that these characters have? How important are their goals? How urgent are their goals uh, in comparison to the others? And see what happens when you play with those things. Yeah. Because you know, it's all about just, you know, doing these sliding these sliders back and forth and seeing what it looks like. And I will say, like, this is where when you're going through the editing process and you're looking at each character and trying to figure out, um, you know, like, hey, this person's the antagonist and their want or their motivation for creating conflict or being the conflict in the scene isn't working or it's not at the same level. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the fix is in like three scenes before that or in act one, when you set up and introduced the, the antagonist or that character, right? So just because we're talking about micro scenes Mm -hmm. and like what happens in each scene and really going through and reflecting on that, sometimes the fix is not in that scene. It's how you set up the scene. That's a really good point. And the nice, the good news is you can go back and fix it. You can like, pull a Bill and Ted and say, oh, I, I will have established this by now. And you can go back later and put, you know, put that in. So and yep. you look like you're really very you know, <laughs> foresight. You're like, oh, yeah, no, I thought ahead. Like, I had no idea. I didn't think of it until then. But it doesn't matter. You can yep, do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then then you get into things like pace and uh, tone and things. And I think that's that's kind of the next level down. Uh, you know, the actual sentence level stuff. Um, what about ending a scene? What about getting out of it? Oh, see, I am like cliffhanger kind of girl. So like I end on, I end very dramatically almost always. Mm-hmm. And when I write novels, I often use, write short chapters and almost every scene becomes a chapter. So again, it, mm-hmm. it, that idea of having a hook and like ending on a like, who, wait, what's going to happen? And then like, what did they just say? And then jumping to a new scene. Like that's just my personal style because I, I, I think as a writer, I get a little bored and I like, I don't want to show the like aftermath and like go like ramble mm-hmm. into a like, okay, well, I guess I'll leave now. <laughs> like, like that's not necessary. It's yeah. not entertaining. <laughs> that's a really good point. Cause that's something else that, that I tend to, to get hung up on in my early drafts is I write like, well, then they got up and then they went to the store and then they would get to the store. They had to park their car because, you know, during their yeah. car, they were thinking about this. And then and then they had to get the get the grocery cart and they had to wipe down the grocery cart and you know, all this stuff, which is boring as hell. Um, and you don't need it. You can just compress it. Like, I understand that in this fiction world, this character thinks of nothing while they're driving. You know, no ideas come to them while they're driving. No ideas, like, it's just, nah, that's just neutral time. And then the next, then it all comes together in this scene when it happens. You know, like, in reality, obviously, you've got 72,000 things going on at once. And, and you know, you'll think about A, B, and C, and, and that would, like, move your own personal story forward. You can, That's boring as heck. You can't do that. So you do have to compress things. And so taking out these, you know, these obviously necessary scenes out because they're not necessary. They're not interesting. If you're bored by them, the reader, reader will be bored too. I mean, and that's one of the things that I struggle with in the scenes is my scenes get too long because I end up writing everything sort of in real time. And then I want to have this massive conversation where they discover everything and explain everything. And I have to go back and say, okay, we're going to summarize this because we don't actually need to have mm-hmm. a hour long conversation, even though in real life, it probably would have taken them an hour long to like give them all the details and explain what's going on and that was really hard for me but in those first drafts like you just have to write it all out there and see what happens and then you can cut that and condense and figure out where to summarize and where to be sort of real time with your dialogue and Mm -hmm. what's happening in that scene yeah it's interesting because like i think about like hyper realistic drama like plays that are like those those kitchen sink dramas you know where they're really you know, the dialogue is so layered and everything's happening, you know, very real time and, and very realistic. But usually the scope of those plays is like an evening, right? Because that's, it's so, it's so dense. You can't get through it very much. Whereas for some things, you, your scope might be very large, it might be a lifetime, in which case you're gonna, you're gonna have to condense stuff in there. Otherwise it'll take people <laughs> a lifetime to read it. And that makes the editing process really hard. <laughs> 
Yeah. So for me, what I like to do at the end of a scene, something to think about is uh, the closing image and the opening image. You know, what is what is the visual at the beginning and the end of the scene? Uh, and it doesn't always have to be visual, but the I kind of like to think of it that way. That that really sets the beginning and sets the end, shows the difference. Um, it also helps me start the scene because sometimes I get a little lost, like I don't know where to go. If I can think of like an image that sort of brings it together, I can describe that image and it kind of helps, you know, kickstart me out. Um, but also I think to close it kind of helps round it out. One thing I, uh, when I teach this, this is a, as a module, uh, I use the example again from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, um, the scene in, in the hut when Hagrid comes in and goes, you're a wizard, Harry, that scene. Um, the opening mm -hmm. image is, is little, it's a sound, it's boom, boom of Hagrid hitting the door. And the closing image is Harry sleeping underneath Hagrid's coat. And like that's such a nice little bookend, and it's such a great way of of and hey, what a difference, right? Like here's this big scary guy coming in there, like no, nope, Hagrid's a sweetheart, and he's protecting Harry, you know. So, um, I think those are kind of a nice tool to use sometimes to open and close your scenes. Is think about an image, visual or otherwise, that will do that. We also don't need to, like, and you had a good point about not getting into it, you know, starting late, ending early. That's a big thing that works nice sometimes. You don't have to. Yeah. Just pay attention, right? <laughs> to how much yeah. time you're spending in one single scene. Once you've hit your point, you can you can move on. You don't have to linger there. Yeah. And and yeah, it like that's where setting the goals beforehand helps because you can see did it work or did it not? You know, has something changed? Yes. Good. I'm out of here. Moving on. And that'll should do the trick, so well, I think we've mastered scenes now completely. That's all you really need to know. <laughs> There's nothing more to it. So I guess we'll just wrap up by saying, um, don't forget that writing is hard. So take it easy. I'm Mary. And I'm Melissa. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.